So tonight we're going to get into tonight's topic. And I'm dealing with uh, the fivefold ministry gifts, and we're dealing with the prophet. All right, we're actually dealing with topic number 29. And we're lining up the topics as it is in the actual book. Okay, not to that days of lockdown, but as we are in the book. And so I want us to know that the fivefold ministry is listed in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. I'm not going to read it now, but know that Jesus Christ has come and has given us the fivefold ministry to equip the saints. And so if you've just listened to this recording tonight, um, and this is the first time, I would please ask you to go and look at the one before this, where we deal with the relationship between the apostle and the prophet. All right, now those two work together. I'm not going to go into that in too much detail tonight, because I want to deal with the actual function of a uh, of a prophet what does a prophet do all right firstly we want to deal with the qualifications of a prophet all right it is the same as any of the other fivefold number one is they must have the qualifications of an elder i'm not going to have time to go into depth with that but just know that you need the qualifications of an elder okay so now somebody's called to be a prophet what is the first thing that you are going to expect from them and most people are going to sit down and say they need a word from the Lord. But that's not their primary, primary goal. All right. When you speak about a prophet, they are there. And I'm going to give you the scripture in Revelation. They are there to make Jesus Christ more real to you. At the end of the day, that is what a prophet must do. Draw you closer to Jesus Christ. Why does it, uh, a prophet give you a prophetic word? So that you know that God's not going to drop you, that God's got a plan, and that God is going to get you through to where you need to go. It's all about bringing you closer to Jesus Christ. And so be careful when prophets are coming there just to make themselves look good. It's not about that. It's about bringing the spirit of prophecy, and that is Jesus Christ. Okay, so everything must be with that foundation. Because remember that the apostles and the prophets, they lay the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. Okay, so let's look at some of the functions. What does a prophet actually do? As opposed to somebody who can just prophesy. All right, there's quite a few of them and we'll go through them. They set New Testament churches in order. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 and says, and God has appointed these to the church, first apostles, then prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healing, helps, administration, uh, variety of tongues. Now, it is not an order from hierarchy. This is the most important, then this one, then this one, then this one. It is function. First, the apostle comes in and comes and breaks a lot of the territory open. Then the prophet will come in and start giving uh, the potential. Where is God going? What is God saying? How do I make Jesus Christ real to this group? Okay, so we're going to go through that in a, a very uh, precise manner. And the Bible says that they are the second order in the church. Now, when we talk about order, it's not, like I said, the hierarchy. It's simply the function. If you're walking in a straight line behind each other, you first get the apostle in then the prophet, and so it carries on. All right? They are one of the fivefold gifts in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. What's the reason for them? Is so that they can equip the body. They are there to get you to know what your calling is, to know what your function is in the body of Christ. Now, that a prophet will help you. They will give you a tremendous uh, direction. They will show you this is what God's potential is in your life. Now, it's not meant to be fortune-telling. It's not meant to say, oh, well, you're going to have a blessed life and you're going to be rich and you're going to have lots of cars and all of that. That's not the function of a prophet. A function of a prophet is to give you a promise so that you can hold on to because very often a prophet will give you a promise because very often after that promise, all hell is going to break loose in your life. Let me give you an example in scripture. Paul, when he had a vision that he had to go to Rome, even when the prophet said, listen, you can't go to Rome because you're going to be bound. We see you bound. He says, I have a compulsion to go because God had shown him where he had to go. And because he knew where he had to go, he was able to endure everything on the way. 
because he knew where God was telling him to go. And that is what a prophetic word does. It draws you to your potential. It shows you what the potential is and what God's plan is. But often when you get that, it is there because you're going to need it. So many people get a prophetic word and they go, rah, rah, I'm so excited. I, I sit down and cringe sometimes when some of the, particularly the business guys, get a word and says, God's going to bless you. You're going to be very wealthy and all of that. And then I just know there's going to be some tough times that they need this prophetic word. And so that is often what happens, that they get told something so that they've got something to hold on to, knowing that this is the promise that God said. I'm going to hold on to it. And you'll see that later on, the Bible says that we need to fight with the prophetic words that we have been given, the accurate ones. And so that is what a prophet does. A prophet comes in and starts giving that potential and guidance. All right, and just before I go into the next point, please, I'm asking nicely that everybody, please hit the share button of, on, your, um, on your feed, please. Okay, I've had so many positive reports of people watching on somebody else's feed and they're getting born again, saved, and you don't even realize that they could be watching off your feed and you are actually instrumental of getting them born again. So I'm really excited. So please just help us and assist us. Okay, so now, the biggest key, like I said, they carry a spirit of prophecy, which is Revelation, and this is probably the most important around a prophet. Revelation 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said to me, see that you do not do that. All right, I'm a fellow servant. In other words, it was an angel that he, that, that he fell at his feet. And your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus, uh, who have the testimony of Jesus, worship God for the testimony of Jesus, listen to this, is the spirit of prophecy. So every prophetic word has got to carry the heart, the, the uh, direction or the pull towards Jesus Christ. It is not about trying to pull you towards the person and the gift. It is about you getting closer to Jesus. And so sometimes um, when you come around prophets, you'll see that they will always point you towards Jesus Christ. True, accurate prophets, even if they are correcting you, will point you towards Jesus Christ. And they, they will correct you to say, if you're going down this path, it's going to hurt you because God's plan is here and God's blessing is on this path. And so it's all about bringing you closer to Jesus and giving you a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they're given for the perfecting of the saints, bringing the saints into the ministry, all right, to edify, to build up the body. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. That's the reason for the fivefold ministry. And so I want you just to know that, and you can go and uh, study that when you get home. All right, for the equipping of saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so they're part of the fivefold ministry that help do that, to build up the body. Okay, so that's very, very important that we know that. All right, I've, I've missed one. They have the gift of prophecy. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. Like everybody else, they've got the gift of prophecy. Now, what would happen with a prophet is, is, is that they would just have it on a higher level. They would have developed that. They will have the gift of prophecy. They'll have a word of knowledge flowing. So they'll have multiple gifts flowing. But their primary thing is, is that they have an incredible ability to come into a place and speak life. When they speak, they bring an authority with them. Okay, so they come and they bring a revelation of Jesus Christ. They come and get you closer to Jesus. But when they speak, and often a prophet will come and break stuff off your life. Wherever the devil's interfering, they will cut it off and say, we stop that interference in the name of Jesus. Why? Because they're part of the foundation uh, ministries and giftings. They are there to help the church get their foundation right. So apostles and prophets deal very much on personal stuff. Okay, They will get rid of the rubbish around your life, the attacks or whatever. They'll show you where you're meant to go and what you're supposed to do. Okay. They're very big on exhortation and confirmation. Now, why, why exhortation? They're going to build you up. They're going to encourage you and say, come, you can do this. 
but also confirmation. In other words, when God's spoken to you in your heart already, they're going to come and they're going to confirm what God has put in your heart already. And so it's really, really important that you understand that not every prophecy is going to be brand new total revelation. Remember that we are trying to hear God's voice. I want to throw this in as a pasala. The Bible speaks about when you invite a prophet in, you get a, a prophet's reward. What is the prophet's reward? An open heaven. That's the prophet's reward. Their big thing is about hearing God's voice. So many times I've been in meetings where a prophet will be ministering and they'll be teaching on something and everybody's hearing God's voice in the auditorium. And they'll be writing down stuff and they'll be getting revelations and they'll be getting words themselves. And so the reason for that is, is because that is a prophet's reward. A prophet's reward is so that you can hear God accurately. All right, that's why, and I haven't got time to go into this, but even Saul, who was totally away from God, went to the, to the prophets, and the minute they got there, sorry, he started to prophesy accurately. Now, why? Because that anointing helps you hear God. That's the prophet's reward. Okay, and it's the same with the other functions, um, the other fivefold ministry, but uh, I'm not going to get into them now. Okay. So the exhortation confirmation in Acts chapter 15, 22. I'm not going to read all of the scriptures. Okay, in warning predictions, Acts 11, 27 to 30. This is New Testament prophets now. And I need you to understand this because there are times when the prophets get together and they give you a word for the nations or the time. You need to listen. If you haven't listened to the uh, gathering of the prophets, I don't know what else to call it, um, that we've got on our Facebook. Okay, please go back and go and have a look. Don't look under videos, look under posts. And then scroll down, and it's a Zoom meeting with a whole lot of prophets there. Sidney Jacobs have, has uh, put them together, got them together. And it's two hours of proper, recognized, world-renowned prophets saying what God is saying to the nations. It's some of the most incredible things to listen to. But the point is that they will come and predict things before it happens, all right? There were many times that the prophet said to the, to the Christians, get into gold, get into gold, get into gold. And that was before the 2018 collapse. And every person who was in gold was stable at that time when that trouble came. And so we need to listen when God gives us warnings. Acts chapter 11, 27 to 30, it says this. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus, stood up and, uh, and showed by the Spirit, in other words, you're prophesying by the Spirit, God was showing him, that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of uh, Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his own ability, determined to send relief to their brethren dwelling in Judea. So already they were starting to send finance to Judea, before the, even, the drought even came through. Why? Because they were warned that this is what's going to happen. Okay, so now the same thing happens. There are prophets that are going to warn nations. So there's prophets that are going to deal with us as individuals to equip the body. And then there's prophets that are going to come and they're going to warn the nation because they're going to tell the church where to line and what to do. And the whole church is going to know where they, where they should be going and get ready for that. All right, and then they give complete testimonies, exhortation to stir up, edification to build up, to comfort, to bind up. They give the conviction, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 29 to 32. In other words, they are there just to build the whole body up and to give testimonies of how God came through. All right, we expect prophets when they give a word that it comes to pass. So we really are expecting God for a supernatural move. Okay, so it's important that we, that we listen to this. Yet comes something that's really important. Please understand this. They are not infallible. All right, the Bible's very, very clear. Every prophecy must be judged. Please get that settled in your heart. You've got to judge every prophecy. No prophet can give you a word or release a word that's not recorded. You have to take it to your spiritual oversight to have it judged. Why? Two reasons. One, 
often there's a condition in the prophecy that you will miss because you only pick up on the highlight. Number two, we need to judge and see if it's really of God or not. And that is not something that, that, that you go, oh, well, you know, that's just being super spiritual. The Bible is clear. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, 29, it says this. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. You have to judge the prophecy. Okay. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. What does that mean? It means that if you're busy with something and somebody else has got a word, then you just let them carry on. Okay, so you take it on like tag team. All right, then the first guy will keep silent. All right, so now, their spirit is under control and subject to the Holy Spirit. Don't let a prophet, um, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 32 and 33. Some prophets have got this thing of, Oh, well, I can't control myself. I start shaking and then they just start screaming over the congregation. No, the Bible's clear that uh, the spirit of the, of the prophecy is subject to the prophet. In other words, the prophet has control when to release it, when not to release it. You can hold it for an hour, two hours. There's nothing that you can't control. And also, we must get out of this thing that prophecy is only in church. Prophecy can be anywhere at any time as long as it's recorded and judged, okay? So you could be in a, in a secular environment, in an office. God gives you a word for somebody. You, you as a prophet we can give them a word, make sure it's recorded and say, please go and judge us with your leadership. Go and listen to it carefully. Write it out. All right, we make everybody write out their prophecies so that we can highlight and just discuss it Okay, because it's not always easy to, to make notes when you're busy um, listening to it. Okay, the next one, there are false prophets. All right, in Matthew 24, 11, it says this, that there are false prophets. Now, what is a false prophet? It's not somebody who does not prophesy accurately. It is somebody who prophesies from a wrong source. All right, the, Matthew 24, 11, there are many false prophets that will rise up and deceive many. How are they going to deceive? Because they're not going to judge the prophetic words. They are not going to sit down and judge the fruit in the person that's giving it. They are going to run off to the gift because, the, and very often, it's not even the gift of prophecy that's in operation. Most times, it's a gift of word of knowledge. All right, so they'll get, give you your telephone number or your bank account card number, whatever it is. And you'll go, this must be God. No, they are coming from a wrong source. They have the right gift, but they come from a wrong source and they are accurate. And people are going to get deceived. So this is how you, you test it. I'm going to show you exactly what to do. All right. They preach and know the word of God. In Hebrews 1 verse 1 to 2, it says, for God who at various times in various ways spoke in the times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these days spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. What's that mean? It means that the, the prophets know the word of God clearly. They have a very strong understanding. Often you'll see that a prophet will be able to take um, a story out of the Old Testament and make it relevant for today and show us the principles. Okay, so it's really, really uh, exciting for us to understand that and see it because most times we don't get a lot of preaching coming out of the Old Testament. But when a prophet comes and draws some of those truths out, it's always exciting to watch. So they know how to preach the Word of God. Okay. They also have to contend with these false prophets. And I'm not going to read this, but in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, there's a large portion. Thessalonians 2, uh, verse 1 to 12, 2 Thessalonians. And I want you to see that there the prophets have to deal with the false prophets. All right. Sometimes they have to expose the false prophets and warn the body and say, listen, be careful. That person's coming from a wrong source. Be careful, that person is going to hurt you or hurt the body of Christ. But now this is the danger. Because somebody comes with a false word or an immature prophet that the word doesn't come to pass, they're still learning, they make a mistake. 
Now we throw all of prophecy out because of that. You must be careful because the Bible says that we need to use the prophetic word to fight with it. We need to be able to fight our faith as part of that. God, you promised I'm standing on your word. You gave me a prophetic word and I'm going to stand on that thing until I see it come to pass. So I'm going to deal now with the testing, the ministry of the prophet. All right. Now, if you really want to test the ministry of a prophet, this is where you go. Okay. Number one. You test the spirit of it. What do I mean by testing the spirit of it? It's very simple. As the person full of love and Jesus Christ, is the person full of love and Jesus Christ, is that their focus? Or is their focus just to correct and fix and hurt people? When a prophet comes, they always come with love. Listen carefully. They always come with love. Okay. 1 John chapter 4, 1 to 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone, gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. So what does that say? It highlights the fact that the prophet is going to highlight Jesus Christ. Everything's about Jesus Christ. Okay. Sorry, verse 3. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is already in the world. All right. We have a lot of people that are in the world right now that is going against Jesus Christ. That's not a, a prophet. That's not a genuine prophet of God. A prophet of God is always going to bring you to Jesus Christ. <laughs> the next one's tough. If you want to know if the prophet's legit or not, a real mature prophet, does their word come to pass? In other words, if they say this is going to happen, does it actually happen? Deuteronomy 18.22 When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is that the thing that he said that the Lord has spoken, the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, okay, you are not to be afraid of him. Okay, so in other words, if they sit down and they give you something, you're not supposed to be afraid of them, you're not supposed to even adhere to their words, you don't respect them as somebody who is a genuine prophet of the Lord. And I'm not talking about a prophet who loves the Lord and is trying and making a mistake. They're still trying. I'm talking about these guys who come and bring fear. They bring condemnation. They was, there was a prophet running around, doom and gloom guy, at one stage saying Valcom was going to have, uh, end up in hell and I don't know what all. That's not God. Where's God's love? Where's that drawing me closer to Jesus Christ? All that's doing is releasing fear. That prophecy is not going to come to pass and I don't need to fear that guy. All right? Because that's why it says don't be afraid of him because they come with fear. They always release fear on people. If you've ever had a word over your life that brings fear, scrap it. Ask God to remove it out of your memory. Don't remember it. Don't. There's so many Christians running around with a word that they thought was God and it's such fearful um, intent that they, their hearts are gripped today still. That they're sitting and they're going, I'm scared to miss God or I'm scared God's going to judge me. That's not a word from the Lord. Get rid of it. So God, I scrap that word in Jesus' name. The next one is a test of worship. One of the things about a prophet is, is that they're very connected to God. And what happens is, how do I get the closest to God very quickly? Worship. That's why we're going to have a worship session at 8 o'clock tonight. Why? Because when we worship, God says, I'm in my um, presence is right there in the midst. So why is it important for a prophet to be connected to worship? Because that is where they hear, they connected to the spirit realm all the time. And so they will be connected to worship. All right, Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 5. And I'm not going to read this portion of scripture just for time's sake. Okay, I want you just to know that they are always connected. Prophets and worship go together. Okay, you'll always see them like that. Test of doctrine. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Why is the test of doctrine important? Because surely we're just going to go and just rely on the prophetic word. No. Remember that a prophet is one of the two functions that set your foundation. 
They have got to know the word of God. They've got to teach it correctly. They've got to come and present it correctly because you are going to take what a prophet says and run with it. Why? Because they will give you a prophetic word that will help you with your gifting and your calling. Therefore, you're going to take what they teach as well. And so they have to have a doctrine test. Are they teaching sound doctrine? Are they, do they know the word? Now, I want to encourage you, if you have got a prophetic call on your life, in other words, that God has clearly said that you're going to be a prophet. I'm telling you right now, I would highly recommend apostolic, prophetic, go to Bible school. Go and get the word and the doctrine settled in your heart. Because what's going to happen is people are going to dismiss you because of your doctrine. And you need to know what the word of God says. Okay, it's not good enough that you run with a gift. You have to be solidly secure and solid in the word. Next is a test of the fruit. And that goes for every single fivefold minister. All right. Are they carrying the fruit of the Lord in their lives? Or are they after this thing for their own pleasure? Or are they just relying on a gift? Don't rely on a gift. Because you are going to end up in a mess if you run off to somebody because of the gift. All right. It's really, really important that they have the fruit of God in their lives so that you can see that God really is working in their lives. Matthew 7, 15 to 23. And so I want you to know that the fruit of God is imperative in any of the fivefold ministry. All right. If you're going to look at that, judge a man by his fruit. Never judge him by his gift. Okay, test of covetousness. In other words, are they after this thing to get money? And they use the gift. I mean, there's literally some prophets that say, listen, I will prophesy to you if you pay into my bank account. Literally. And I go, how can you charge for a gift? The Bible's very, very against that. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 11, and you can go read it. God is going to judge you for being covetous. Okay, greedy, trying to take things for yourself. And they use the gift to get it. God is going to hold men and women accountable. The gifts freely give, freely receive, freely give. And that's why as far as possible, we try and give the stuff away as free as we can. That's the ministry of the people. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 18 to 23. And it's really that you need to go and test their ministry. See where they're at. How do they live their lives? How do they conduct themselves? Okay, so now I want to sum up with a few things before we close. A prophet is there, number one, to bring Jesus Christ, to highlight Jesus Christ. Number two, to give us potential and go after the potential, give us direction. Okay, show us where we're going. A prophet will bring us correction. A prophet will expose the false prophets to protect the body and show us who the prophets are that are coming with accurate words, but with the wrong source. Okay, they're going to warn us and say, be careful, there's something wrong here. Okay, but then also, what happens on our side is when you get a prophetic word, what do you do with it? Number one, record it. Number two, judge it. Number three, start working on it as much as you can if you believe it's from the Lord. Give you an example. If you've been prophesied over you that you are going to become a musician, you better start getting an instrument and learn where the chords are, how it works, and start practicing. Why? Because God doesn't just come and anoint you to be a musician without even trying. What he has done is he has anointed you with an ability to learn it quickly. Anoint you with an ability to have an ear to hear musically. All right, all those things are giftings that God has already built into you, but he's going to highlight it through the prophetic and say, this is your potential. This is where I want you to go. This is the direction you must go. And then also the prophets will come and they'll change your direction if a season changes. And say, listen, you've been going in this direction for so long. It's time that you need to just adjust it a little bit more. Okay, so it's really important that you know that. And so that is how, the, how we work with the prof, uh, prophecies over our lives. Because then you take it and you say, okay, now God, I'm going to fight with this thing. You've promised me something, but the rest, the world doesn't, it's not lining up. My life doesn't line up with what you promised. I'm going to pray this thing through day and night. And devil, you're going to let go of my plan on my life. 
and you are not going to have any part of this thing. I'm going to believe God, I'm going to trust God, and I'm going to do what God called me to do. You know, and it's amazing how that God brings certain things to play, um, prophetic words in your life. Because one of the things that, um, that God said in, one of, uh, in, in our lives was that media was going to play a huge role in our ministry. Now, who would have thought that Facebook would be the media source? You see, and we can go through prophet after prophet that prophesied different things that have been accurate. Some of it takes 10 years to get there. It's not about the timing. It's about how accurate they are. So the timing could be way ahead. So you've got to just trust God until it comes, but you do what you can and you don't let go of what God said over your life. And so that's how we work with prophecy. That's how we work when a prophet comes into town. So what am I looking for when a prophet comes in? Number one, I want to see Jesus. I want them to show me Jesus. Give me a revelation of who Jesus is. Number two, I want an open heaven so that I can hear God. I, when a prophet comes into town, I can hear clearly. I sit down and I'm able to hear and get plans and all sorts of things. All right, when I sit into the meetings. And very often, I'll sit down and listen to a message that a, that a prophet's got. And they might not even be the best preachers. They might not even give the best word. But every single person so excited. Why? Because God spoke to them. God stirred up something inside of them. They started to get hope. They started to see the testimonies of how God is moving. So I want to encourage you. Do not be put off by the New Testament prophets. They are there to bless the church. They are there to get you in your direction, in your function. They will work together with the apostles. And the two of them will get you to where you need to go and have that foundation established properly in your life. So I want to close with this. Prophets are a blessing. So let's just honor them, respect them like we do with the fivefold ministry. But when they come into your, into your area, start drawing on that thing and say, God, I'm really expecting to hear from you. Even if the prophet doesn't give me a prophecy, I need to hear from you. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm going to have an open heaven. I'm going to hear what they have to say, what you have to say for me in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you. Lord, that you are going to bring us to the fullness that you have for us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that everything that Satan has planned is going to come to naught. Lord, I thank you right now for the prophetic ministry. I thank you for the prophets that you are raising up over our nation. And Lord, I pray right now that they will have an accurate word for this season in Jesus' name. And Lord, that we as the body of Christ will judge the words and we will align ourselves to the ones that we know are from you. And Lord, I thank you right now that you will raise up men and women, that the prophets will stand up strong in our nation with a clear word of the Lord. And we thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.